Greetings, friends, and welcome to Mark's Vinyl and CD Collection, Episode 20. Um, I decided to make this video today because I need a little bit of a break. I've been going full tilt, recording my next Project Gemini record, and believe it or not, doing these kind of videos sometimes I find very therapeutic and relaxing. So why not go ahead and make one now to give myself a little bit of a break? Um, today I'm going to be doing quite a mixed bag of things. Mixed bag of music, mixed bag of formats. Um, we'll be seeing cassettes, CDs, and vinyl today. Um, but let me not babble too much and let's just get on with it and I'll explain as I go through because if I don't then this video will be like an hour long and we don't want that. Okay, so let's start with cassettes. Before I go on to show you my cassettes, um, I've been asked by quite a few people what kind of cassettes I have in my collection. I don't have a very big collection of cassettes. You'll see them all, in fact, right now. Um, that's how few I really have. But they're all cassettes that I enjoy, that I love and value, and that are in really good condition, most of them. Um, and I'll go on to say this, that I'm a fan of the format, although I don't really um, buy any of them lately. Um, any cassettes. Not that there's many out there to buy. In fact, I think the only cassette that I've seen recently was Metallica reissuing their 598 Garage Days album on cassette. Um, I like the format. I like tape. Tape sounds good if you take care of it. And uh, I'll go on record to say that my favorite version of Exit Stage Left actually is a version that I made off of my vinyl onto a really nice Maxell chrome tape and I've never heard a better version of Exit Stage Left than that cassette that I had. So if done correctly, it can be a really good format. But you know, it's not something I'm going to go and pursue as far as my own music unless something really strange happens and people like demand it or something. Anyways. Let's take a look at the cassettes that I have in my collection. So here's a tape from a band called Freeways. This is a band that's local here to where I live. And they um, actually had me master this EP. So I am the mastering engineer on this. Uh, let me see if I can find this really quickly here. And there's the J card and if you take a look here you'll probably see uh, where is it come on damn you focus anyways right there if you take my word for it it says Mastered by, my, by, blah, blah, blah. Mastered by Mark Kopernicki. So, that's me. Uh, that's one. I'm going to have to go through this a bit quicker. Sweet. Torment. This is another album that I was involved in. I mixed and mastered this release. That's the independent stuff. Um, actually, no, I do have one more. Droid, this is their first demo. Uh, my nephew actually played bass and was in the band at this time. So that's how I got the copy number two of 100. Uh, at this point, I wasn't really involved with the band. My nephew just gave me a copy of this, and I thought it was really cool. Okay, now on to bands that you may know. I found this in my basement. I forgot I had this Exciter, a Canadian band. Uh, I'm sure many of you know who Exciter are. There you go. Um, let's take a look if I can go through here. Let's 
some uh, decent kind of speed metal stuff. Okay, now let's go on to some other stuff. Sticks. This is Cornerstone. This is a rather old version of it. Then we have David Bowie, Let's Dance. Let's dance, did it, did it, did Put on your red shoes and dance the blues. Okay. Here we have the cassette. Don't have too many Bowie. As you can see, I only have that and this. This is Heathen. Really good album. I really like Heathen. I know it's not looked upon fondly by some uh, Bowie fans, but I think it's a good record. It has a few guest appearances by people like Pete Townsend and uh, Mr. Foo Fighters himself, Dave Grohl. It's a good album. Then we have Genesis, Duke, great record, everybody I'm sure knows this, there's so many hits on this album, Misunderstanding being one of them, and of course, Turn It On Again are the two that'll come to mind right away. Then we have the self-titled. Some people call this album Shapes for some reason. This, I think, is an early one as well. I looked on Discogs and this one is not even on the site. So, must not be a very common pressing of it. I believe this is a US one. Yeah, it's a US version of it and uh, yeah don't seem to find it on there here's uh, Genesis Live this is the way we walk these are the long version ones this is also a Digalog tape Digalog which was the big hype back in that time I remember I had a Images and Words Dream Theater on that and it sounded really good these, these tapes do sound really nice these Digalog tapes And uh, we have here the Moody Blues Octave. This also is a kind of older version of it. This is on London Records here in Canada. Okay, now we're going to move on to Yes. Union. This is an album that uh, sparks much debate amongst Yes fans. Some people like it, some people loathe it. I'm sort of in the middle. I don't really hate it, I don't really love it either. Um, yeah, I, like I said, I don't really mind this record but they've done definitely better. Um, here is a completely sealed copy of Yes Big Generator, complete with price sticker and everything. Um, this is a cutout bin thing, as you can tell, because they, for some reason, hacked out this part here to make it a proper cutout. So that's sealed, not even opened. Mint, as they would say. And the last one here is Yes 9012 Live. This is a US one. All these Yes ones, I believe, are US variations. For some reason, my camera doesn't like focusing for some reason. Okay, so that is 
of those. Now the last batch of oh, shiza of the cassettes that I have are here. I just unfortunately didn't arrange these very neatly, so give me one second here. Okay. So the last, as you can probably imagine, are KISS cassettes. 1985 reissue Creatures of the Night. I believe this is a US one. Is it? Yes, it's a US version. This is an 80s reissue, I believe, of Dynasty. US one. You can always tell by that spine. This is an 80s, late 80s reissue. But these are the white cassette versions. There's also a black cassette version of the same albums if you look on Discogs. <clears throat> but they come in these kind of beige cases. Rock and roll over. Again, the 80s issue. These are all in incredibly good condition. And last, the last four actually I got in a one-time buy, like a complete set, so I'm very happy to have got these. These are not these are in good shape, but they're far from mint. But these are the solo albums. Peter Chris. And these are all Canadian though, these ones. And they have the sticker printing. No song titles on them. As you can see, he's really side one, side two. Now, I love these albums, I'm a huge Kiss fan. I do like the solo records. Um, my two favorites are obviously Ace and. Mr. Paul Stanley, I think he had a great album. Um, who I think is the best depends on the day. Usually it's between Ace and Paul. But uh, the other ones have grown on me over the years. Peter Chris's one has grown on me nowhere near as much as this one has grown on me, which is Gene Simmons's record. People still find this one a little odd to swallow. It's kind of all over the place and very unlike Gene, especially back at that time. But it's starting to grow on me and still growing on me still. So that is my cassette collection. And for all those of you who are asking about them, there they are. Next, we're going to move on to CDs. I am a big fan of the format, still release stuff of my own music on CD and will continue to. I have no issue with the digital format whatsoever. It can be done really well and sound good if done correctly, just like everything. Vinyl can sound shit too if you don't treat it properly. So let's take a look at the CDs that I've recently got. Spock's Beard, Snow Live. This is a great, great live album. It's two CDs, two DVDs, the whole show on both CD and DVD. You got everything here. There's the CDs, there's the DVDs. Wonderfully done, sounds great. Now, I've been collecting a lot of Zappa, and anybody who's a Zappa fan knows that you can be collecting like on a daily basis and you can maybe crack 
you know, crack the surface of how many things he has out there. So let me show you some of the stuff I got recently. This is Frank Zappa Live Chicago 78. Now, I believe if you look back here, this is the 100th and 8th release. If you look at the spine, there's a little number at the top. Of course, my stupid camera doesn't want to zoom in properly, but if you take my word for it, I know I'd make this zoom in. Come on. Anyways, 108th release. Uh, this comes with the booklet inside here. Sorry about that. There's the insert. What a band he had at this time. Billy, Vinny Kaluta on drums. Tommy Mars on keyboards. I mean, come on. What a great band this was. And a great set. There's the set list on the back. Incredible stuff. Um, I'll just show you one of the CDs real quick. There you go. Like I said, I'm a big fan of the uh, the man and his stuff. There's the insert. I loved at the. I always loved that at the back here. Uh, their Vaultmeister Joe goes through some of the uh, technical details of it. Like it says here, in order to present this show in its entirety, there were three different sources used. Main source is a half-inch four-track analog tape master. The secondary source is a quarter-inch two-track reel-to-reel analog tape master and a board cassette. All tapes were heat-treated and transferred at 96K 24-bit wave by Joe Travers. So, there you go. Don't forget, these tapes are old. 1978 is a long time ago. So, you want this stuff preserved, you have to go and put it onto digital. Little Dots. This is another release is 109th. This is the one right after the one I showed you. This is also live with some different performances of different songs. Rolo is actually very interesting because it's a piece that he had been working on for quite a long time. And I believe that's one of the first instances that he had the whole piece completed and performed. There you go. I believe there's a booklet in here. There's, uh, again, more information on the album itself, technical details, blah, 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 blah. And uh, let me see if I can get the CD out here real quick. There you go. Now, the last two <coughs> CDs are... Zappa sort of box set really they're not box sets but they're sort of like specialty projects that he does and I'm really into these I, I love it I love how he, can, he expands totally on the record that he makes this is the expansion to uh, cruising with Ruben and the Jets he released something here called greasy love songs these are different variations and, and versions of the album and I'll show you what I mean in a second this is very hard to show in this because it has a sort of a interesting mylar finish to it here now of course in total zappa humor you have a booklet here to how to make the jelly roll hairdo and how to do those kind of 50s dance moves which is very important i'm sure um, and it has you know the lyrics and it has information and I'll just read you really quickly what it says here. Um, Cruising with Ruben the Jets, the 1968 vinyl stereo mix is on here. The original vinyl stereo mix. Now, there's a note here saying that this is now appearing after 40 years in obscurity. So this is the original mix that was done by Frank Zappa. I don't believe this is the one that came out on vinyl or came out at the time. Um, yeah that came out at that time on vinyl um <laughs> of course his little picture that comes with it and on the back it has the band members and of course my stupid camera doesn't want to zoom in <clears throat> i'm gonna have to do something about that figure out how the hell to fix that so there you go and on the 
CD, there's also alternate mixes of stuff, mono uh, versions of certain songs. But this here is one of my prized possessions. There's another project, and this is Lumpy Money. This has Lumpy Gravy, and we're only in it for the money dissected in more detail. There you have Lumpy Gravy, and we're only in it for the money. Now, I'm telling you, Certain bands should be taking note of this. This is the way that you expand on a record. I wish bands like the one that I'm wearing on my shirt would take note and make these kind of releases for their stuff. Yeah, I know, they don't own their material, blah, 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 but, you know, put some pressure on your label, guys, come on. And anyways, to show you what I love about this, here's the rather thick booklet. And to tell you what you have when you get this, Here's the kind of breakdown on the booklet. So disc one has ironically, uh, for Record Store Day, Frank Zappa, Frank Zappa uh, Family Trust released the Lumpy Gravy Primordial version of the album. And that is actually what's on here, the very first thing. Right there. So what came out now on Record Store Day, you would already have had it if you have this on CD. And I'm actually getting that now in the mail too. Thanks to Steve. Thank you, buddy. Um, and we'll have that on vinyl. And it's on 45 RPM vinyl, I think. But this is the original orchestra edit for Capitol Records from the sessions at Capitol Studios. Mono version, four-track master tape sequence that was done on May 19th, 1967. And there's also a 1968 original mono mix of We're Only In It For The Money. This is not a fold-down mix from stereo to mono. This is a separate, discrete mono mix created by Frank Zappa with Dick Kuntz in 1968. The source is a quarter-inch analog master. There's also a 1984 UMRK remix of Lumpy Gravy on here as well. And there's also a 1984 remix of the original CD release of We're Only In It For The Money. Disc 3 has various other versions that are transferred from an original two-track analog master tape, which has a bunch of things from Lumpy Gravy and from the tracking of We're Only In It For The Money, which is very interesting. So this is definitely worth getting. It's a massive booklet, all full of pictures and stories about the making of these two records. So that's my... CDs for now and to end this off I'm going to show you um, my latest thing that I got this is a late addition to my record store day stuff that I got I wasn't able to get this on the day so I grabbed it just I believe the day, yeah, day before yesterday I got this uh, which was the David Bowie Let's Dance 12 inch single Now the reason why I got this was for the full-length demo. Um, it's really, really good. I mean, for a demo, it's absolutely fantastic standing. I listened to it the other day and uh, was just absolutely happy as hell listening to it. I mean, that's the way a demo should sound. It's really good. Uh, and of course, now I'm getting a glare like hell on this. Why can't you cooperate? You know what? You're pissing me off. One second. Screw you, overhead light. How's that? That's better. Okay, so there's the demo. This is a 45 RPM, 12 inch, obviously. And there's Let's Dance Live, taken from the tour from the album. Now, I wasn't too hip on the live version of the song, mainly because they mixed it in the kind of format that I don't like live albums that are mixed in, which is, it sounds like you're sitting at the back of the arena and you're getting all this reverb of the arena on top of you know the band performance i know that's it's supposed to be a live recording but i'm more of the liking of live albums that are taken more from the direct source and 
having a bit of the audience mixed into it, not a whole washer verb and audience and kind of hearing the band way back there, sort of, when you're listening to it. So it's still okay. I mean, it's worth it's definitely worth the money. It was under $20 to get that. So, And that demo is worth every cent. It sounds fantastic. I love it. Now, the last thing I'm going to show you is uh, something that I'm going to be starting on my next segment, which is a long time ago when I first started going on to doing these type of videos on YouTube, I did a segment called Influential Albums, and it was on my other channel. I don't even know where these um, videos ended up. I haven't activated that channel in years. so. Um, but I'm going to be rest restarting that again, the Influential Albums, because I do have a lot of records that I'd like to talk about that are influential to me, not only as a guitar player, or as a songwriter, but in other ways, uh, from a production standpoint, from a you know marketing standpoint, were influ influential to me because I am also a one-man operation here for my own stuff. So it, some of these records have inspired me on how they marketed them, etc. But of course, a lot of these are influence influential as far as songwriting and performance. So the one that I'm going to start on next video is going to be this album here, and I'll show you two versions of it, which is Relayer from Yes. This is the United States promotional copy with a white label there. Uh, the thing I don't like about white labels is, as you noticed, Gates of Delirium is put in three parts, and it is actually cut that way, where you have three separate breaks in the song, which is a big no-no to Yes fans, but it sounds very good. The promotional copies always sound good back at this time. <clears throat> and another variation of the record that I have is the 180 gram Friday music pressing. When I do the proper video to this, I will take them out and show you them in more better detail. But this is just like a short introduction telling you what I'm going to be doing upcoming for the next um, segment of this video or this, this type of video, the Mark's Vinyl Collection. I'm going to be doing my influential albums segment. It won't be every single time I'll I'll put them in, intersperse them with other episodes, but I will be doing that just for you guys to see what kind of records have inspired me through the years, and um, some of them might be records that inspire you, or you might want to get. So um, that's it for now. Thank you for your patience. I know some of you are not hip to cassettes, or maybe not hip to CDs. Maybe some of you are not hip to vinyl. Maybe you guys do like CDs or cassettes, but whatever. Hopefully there's a little bit of everything for everyone this time around. So uh, thank you very much for watching. Um, I'm not going to put up all that information that I usually do. It's going to take 20 years with the amount of stuff I just showed. But uh, most of this stuff you can find online anyways if you want to go into more detail. But I will go into more, de more detail once I start doing the influential albums. Okay, so I'll stop my babbling and get ready to go back and record some more album tracks. So take care, my friends. Have a great weekend or what's left of it. And I'll talk to you all soon. Bye for now.